This week are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne and Russell Howard, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Mickey Flanagan. <laughs> Start with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of the England football team after their World Cup exit. But what does GCED stand for? Is it Glasgow Celebrates <laughs> Edinburgh Delirious? <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely can't even defend. Is it a list of Rooney's favourite things? Granny's custard El Devo. <laughs> Is it, in fact, a list of the letters that the assistant referee failed in his recent eye test? Have <laughs> 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 a goals, cheering, England? Deutschland. <laughs> Is it Gerard calls Euro Disney? Have you got any last-minute cancellations? <laughs> Is it gobsmackingly <laughs> crap? Every decade. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's to do with Rooney. That's actually GCED is how he spells Gerard. Yeah. <laughs> or how he spells GCSE. Yes. <laughs> is it just gigantically crap, expensive donkeys? <laughs> As you turn that into a proper head, I just. You know. Germans crush English dreams. Yes, very good. Mickey Flanagan, well done. Congratulations. <laughs> Germans crush England's dreams is the answer I was right, looking that's for. That's it, I'm off now. <laughs> <laughs> This is the story of England's departure from the 2010 South Africa World Cup. Having scraped through to the last 16 after finishing second in the group, England were knocked out following a dismal 4-1 defeat against Germany on Sunday. The final score marks the worst defeat ever for England in a World Cup. So what was your reaction to England It was going dreadful. Out? It was so different. The worst bit, we're 4-1 down and Capello brings on Heskey. <laughs> we need goals and we turn to Heskey. That's like being lost in a maze and asking Stevie Wonder for help. <laughs> <laughs> if we'd have defended that badly in World War II, we'd currently be recording a show called Mock and Divocke! Lieber Schweinsteiger! That's all we'd be saying. That's the most German name in the world, isn't it? Schweinsteiger! What does it, does it, it mean? Steiger. What does Steiger mean? I know it's Schwein means. It means pig supervisor, which <laughs> over here we call that it's Kerry Katona's agent. <laughs> The worst bit, I'm not going to troll to your agony and this or whatever, was when the fourth goal went in and you brought on Hesse and they just brought on anyone. They took <laughs> on everyone important to already... There's 25 minutes to go and they were already resting they, people. Yeah. They brought on two little known subs and a guy who won a phone-in competition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the game, but I admire Lampard's, <laughs> um, you know, reticent. I admire his, his, his calm under pressure that he didn't just go up to the referee and just abuse him. Like, just throw untold insults at him until eventually the referee went, now, that's crossing the line, and then go, I'm sorry, I didn't think you'd notice. <laughs> Witty little bit of ref banter. I didn't yes. think you. I didn't think it. you'd notice it. Can't tell. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> You're saying now that it's tiredness that's created a lot of it, and I, I can see that with Rooney because he has been making Shrek free for the last two. Of <laughs> They are tired, and basically, Capello said he thinks what should happen is that they should have a winter break, as opposed to at the moment when they have a break in the middle of the actual game. <laughs> The only person who's really taken Capello to task is that bloke who accosted him and shouted at him, I paid £5,000 to come out here. That team you put out there was a disgrace. You should be ashamed of yourself. But you can't say that to Capello. You have to say, me pay £5,000. <laughs> you... <laughs> <laughs> you know, basically, the problem was, wasn't it, was he was playing 
Gerard out of position. Yeah. He was playing John Terry out of position. But the worst thing of all, he was playing Emil Heskey about six and a half thousand miles <laughs> out of the position yeah. that he should have been playing in. <laughs> True fact, during all England games, the national grid at half-time experiences a massive surge, which is due to people dropping toasters in their baths. <laughs> <laughs> Said what a wonderful bit of mind. Uh, that was German delight. tactics apparently were very simple. They tried to lure John Terry out of defence, and it worked. There was one of their team was holding a picture of Wayne Bridge's girlfriend on the edge of the pool. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> well, no, you want to. <laughs> what we should do? We should sack them for a year. Right? Give them all rubbish jobs. How brilliant will they be when they come back? Rudy, you were incredible out there. I don't want to go back to Argos. <laughs> You just run after all the little pens. Hey, 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 remember this, remember this? Yeah, 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 yeah. go on, Stop go to the back and get, get that toaster. Yeah, go on. Uh, we should look on the positive. Now, at least we won't have to watch that Brian Blessed Shakespeare advert again. Oh. How terrifying is that? Oh, Gianni, he shat himself on that. Do you know who's that watching the ads with any great joy at the moment, which is Rain Rooney? So, between every commercial break, there's a picture of him with a long beard li living in a caravan. Yeah. He's going, yeah. oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't make that promise to the nation yet. In fairness, that, that goal would have been the turning point. And even then, Lampard, apparently, when he was swapping jerseys with, with his German counterpart, the, German, the, the other player even said, by the way, that, that goal should have been allowed. And then he went on to say, by the way, I don't want your jersey. It stinks of defeat. <laughs> <laughs> even, even David Cameron has come out and said he thinks we need technology. <coughs> I mean, it was a terrible mistake and one that a lot of us were disappointed by. But he's the Prime Minister now, <laughs> and we need to get on with it. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah you, you, what, you were robbed, of course you were robbed. And I, the poor guy didn't spot it. But more embarrassing for the guy in the evening match who didn't spot an offside, which then they stuck up on the giant screens in a real nye, 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 nye. Uh, <laughs> And then they had to do this thing going, I fucking got it wrong, I fucking got it wrong. I know, no, you, I know you got it wrong. I know you got it wrong. <laughs> Quick, we better cover our mouths in case the deaf <laughs> lip readers and it kicks off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's the thing about the, this business of goal line technology, and they're talking about ice oh, is too expensive. Like it's going to be microchips in footballs and lasers on the lines. Why don't they just rewind the tape? Have Sky not got Sky Plus? <laughs> <laughs> they could just, I'll phone in. Yeah, uh, on, yeah, yeah. That was a goal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's fine. Actually. Did you see us? Oh, that is, that is good. The old way. Okay, and the match is paused. We're going to Chris. Yeah. Uh, uh, hang on. Wait a minute. Oh, sorry. I've taped Peppa Pig on it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but if it's any consolation, George has found Mr. Dinosaur. <laughs> Don't you think it would have been a wonderful moment for, you know, relationships with Ger If the goalkeeper would have turned around and said, it went in. Don't yeah. you think? Yeah, he it would have been could, a But he didn't. He turned around very craftily and he went... Couldn't believe they were still playing. Yeah. <laughs> Are you genuinely telling me that that An was Englishman would have. An Englishman would have. An Englishman would have. An English keeper would have grabbed the ball and just gone, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can't tell me English footballers are now renowned for their honesty, are they? Compared even, to the Europeans. Even, even after the game, like at the, Steven Gerrard actually said, right, having been beaten 4 1, Steven Gerrard said, it may have seemed that we were uh, given a right hiding in the second half, but that wasn't the case. Like he actually said, I don't know if before he said that he went, look into my eyes, not around the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what's Lampard, Lampard said, Lampard said, no one can tell me that we got beaten 4-1 today. And you're going, well, <laughs> there's a giant scoreboard in the corner. Let's get a look at that. Sure. Well, what, what's interesting, apparently sales of condoms have gone down since England have been knocked out of the World Cup. Generally true. Which implies that there were blokes beforehand going, good girl, Linda! <laughs> <laughs> so when I keep playing like that, you're going to get it, darling. <laughs> Is there a female equivalent? Well, that is a cracking episode of Hollyoaks, yeah. Barry! <laughs> I'm going to ride you like a pit pony. <laughs> so, hey, like, for the entire match, is there a woman sitting on the edge of the couch in, like, all basked up and stuff, like, and then as the goals go in, going, get me coat. Uh, <laughs> the Argentina are through, aren't they? Well, and, uh, and they're exciting. You get to see Maradona. Looks like a cross between Antonio Banderas and we, a little Jimmy Cranky. <laughs> And then when they score, that much kissing going on on the Argentinian bench, it looks like Clapham Common on a dark night. 
<laughs> Maradona, Maradona in that suit, he's a man who should not be wearing a suit, isn't he? He looks, he looks like he's either <laughs> on his way to court or, or he's about to do an advert going, Hey, you want carpets? Crazy, Diego, are you? <laughs> yeah, that man. The boys got a Russell and an Andy! <laughs> OK. Now we play a round called... If only three people do this round, we can all mock off early. <laughs> this game involves Mickey, Andy and Chris. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Travel. Who wants to come in that? I'll do that. Chris Hansen. <laughs> The most dangerous roads in the whole of the world are British motorways. That's my sincere belief. Not because of the speed, because you can't get up speed on a British motorway because you're stuck behind a dick in a caravan. <laughs> Do you know, I found this out. One in five families in this country goes caravanning. Why? What makes a family who don't get on in a normal-sized house <laughs> believe that squeezing themselves into a tin for a fortnight is going to improve matters? It's just, it's such a self-deluding activity, which for me is symbolised by that, you know that five-foot-long wing mirror, the tangible wing mirror the dad puts on the collar. I have to see what's behind me. It's a, it's a paramount importance that at all moments I can see what is behind me. Oh, for goodness, just paste a picture of a traffic jam on there, because that's what's behind you. <laughs> You don't need to look to see what's behind you. It's there because you are. So the government, they're boring, right? The motorways are boring and the government puts up those signs to stop us falling asleep, saying, TARDIS can kill, take a break. <laughs> but the thing is, we're not surprised by those signs anymore, so they don't really work. I think they have to keep changing them. I think they should change those signs to keep us on our toes. Change them to ones that say, Deja vu can kill, take a break. And then one exactly the same, half a mile. <laughs> OK, let's spin the wheel again. Next topic is politics. Who wants to come in on that? Any persons. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have a Liberal Conservative coalition. It makes no sense, does it? Two words that mean completely opposite things. <laughs> it would be like having the Whig Baldy coalition. <laughs> Or having voted for the no swearing arse party. <laughs> we have a new foreign secretary, William Hague. I don't think he's going to be taken seriously, is he? <laughs> Every time he goes to Afghanistan, they're just going to think, oh, it's Ross Kemp on another undercover show. <laughs> I mean, at the moment, you know, we'll never know, will we? Exactly how much Bigot Gate affected the election result. Why didn't Gordon Brown just answer Gillian Duffy's question? All she said was, those Eastern Europeans, where are they coming from? <laughs> now, even I could have answered that question. <laughs> Thank you very much, that was <laughs> OK, that leaves us with Mickey. Let's see what topic you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the topic is food. Oh, here you go. Now, this is one of my favourite topics because I actually hate restaurants. And my wife loves restaurants. She's middle class. She's, she's been skiing and everything. <laughs> and she loves a restaurant. She says, can we go to a restaurant at the weekend? And I say, yes, we can. And we're there. We're barely there two minutes. And she's like, isn't it a lovely ambiance? <laughs> and I say to her, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I've worked out what an ambiance is. It's a night out rap poor people, innit, basically. <laughs> it's people with a few quid to say, can we just have one night out about the poor people turning up? <laughs> you know what they're like, they'll be banging spoons together, singing Mile Man's a Dustman, <laughs> creating an atmosphere. We want an ambiance. <laughs> so we try and enjoy the ambiance. <laughs> but something's happened spoiling it for me. There's no tomato sauce on the table. <laughs> Creating the situation when my wife looked at me, she said, you're going to ask for tomato sauce, aren't you? I said, yes, I am. Because I'm going to have the risotto. <laughs> you can't eat risotto without red sauce, it's too dry. It's health and safety issue. You've got to use it up with a bit of red sauce. Right? So I thought, I'm not having it. I said to the waitress, excuse me, do you have any ketchup in the building? 
she's looked at me like I'm the worst pleb God has ever put breath in. <laughs> she went off to the kitchen and I saw her making her way back with a pot about that big, about two chipfuls of tomato sauce. <laughs> I thought, oh, here we go. She's tried to put it down and walk away like she's doing a drug deal or something. <laughs> and I stopped. I said, hold on, love, love, don't, 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 don't rush off. And I took a sip of it. <laughs> and I looked at it. I said, yes, I'll have a bottle, please. Thank you very much, if you are good. And that point, first, we're making fun again. Our next round is called Newsreel. We play in a recent piece of footage featuring people in the news and ask you to suggest what might be being said. OK, here we go. Oh, yes. I uh, bet you're glad to see me again. <laughs> I'm uh, loving not being Prime Minister, but some uh, old habits do die hard, so uh, you're a bigot. Uh, <laughs> uh, you're a bigot. Yep, you're a bigot. Um, so how are you, uh, how are you Nick? You OK? You, you, you enjoying yourself? Well... Actually, now you come and mention it. No, I'm not. I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually bloody pissed off. <laughs> what, what does that mean? Well, it's this coalition thing, isn't it? I mean, really, I'm just a lackey, aren't I? I mean, I'm just a lackey. I mean, even my own children, my own children, are calling me Smithers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hello, dear. Hello, dear. Are you, uh, are you in here to keep out of the cold? Only uh, I'm going to have to move you along because the Queen's coming along in a minute. <laughs> yeah. No, don't worry. I know exactly who you are. Only joking. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, come the revolution, this is where you'll be tried. <laughs> uh, you'll go down this staircase, avoiding the rotten tomatoes thrown by the baying <laughs> protesters. And you... You're a lawyer. I want you to defend me on four counts of inciting racial hatred <laughs> and 156 of cruelty to animals. So, oh. Oh, hello. <laughs> oh, I say. Oh, yes, lovely. Hang on a minute. I've just got to think of something inappropriate to say. <laughs> and, um... uh, no, I've got it. Who fences a threesome? <laughs> mm. oh, here. Here Our next round is called If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question? On the board are six categories. Mm. Mickey, which category would you like? Home news, OK. Please. Your category is home news. The answer is obesity, warts and indigestion. <laughs> what is the question? Is it the original title of Sex in the City 2? <laughs> What do you get if you eat one of the hairy bikers? <laughs> is it, what's the worst possible police call sign? Charlie Delta Foxtrot, this is obesity, warts, indigestion. <laughs> man down, man down, enema piles, kazoos, hit the dirt. <laughs> what three words are circled in Bob Geldof's book of baby names? <laughs> <laughs> Name three things you can't get rid of by going expelliarmos. <laughs> Is it, is, it, uh, is it what are the top three paint colours in Gilux's broken Britain range? <laughs> <laughs> what do you get if you eat a pizza while shagging a toad? <laughs> is it... Is it... <laughs> what did you not put before GSOH in a lonely heart attack? <laughs> <laughs> What have I, at one time in my life, claimed my semen can cure? <laughs> yeah, really, have you? Yeah, funnily enough, obesity is the one they fall for most often. <laughs> <laughs> is it what can you catch just by watching an episode of Embarrassing Bodies? <laughs> it's one of that program, isn't it? Why do they go on telly? Oh, my arse is green. Can you put a, <laughs> you put a camera on it so all my mates can see me? <laughs> With a green arse. The presumption is that if, the, if, if I admit to a green arse, then everyone go, oh, thank, thank God you were brave and said, because I also have a green arse. Yeah, yeah. Nobody yeah. has a green <laughs> arse. You're the only one. That's all you've proven, is that you're the only one with a green arse. Oh, sorry. I think it is, I think it's, these are, I think, what are three of the reasons people have claimed incapacity benefit? That's absolutely Isn't right. It? Thank you very much, yeah. Jeff. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, the question I was looking for was, what ailments have been given as reasons for being unfit to work by incapacity claimants? The coalition government is aiming to reduce the 12.5 billion incapacity benefit bill. It's now likely that <coughs> many of the 2.6 million people on incapacity will have to be retested. Some people have been claiming that they are too fat to work. Yes. <laughs> and you're thinking, well, you know, there must be some jobs where being very large would be a bonus. Such things as maybe... England goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> Among the things that people claim for include our stress, was mentioned dizziness, anxiety, that's all fine. Hemorrhoids, 
coughs. Hemorrhoids? Hemorrhoids. What, do they work as a pogo tester or well, something? <laughs> uh, blisters. Surely, though, if you're suffering from hemorrhoids, all you need to do is get a job where you're standing up, and if you're suffering from blisters, you need to get a job where you're sitting down. So surely all we need to do is pair up the hemorrhoid and blister people <laughs> and get them to swap jobs. What a fun meeting that'll be. <laughs> How is uh, the government planning to cut down on these people? You know, they said they were going to make disability tests tougher. What does that mean? They're going to tip people out of a wheelchair and put them on total wipeouts. <laughs> Hey, you know the news? Why were these two men in the headlines this week? This star is the longest tennis game ever, I believe. No wonder it was so long. Look, neither of them even had a racket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, 76, what, what are the names? Uh, Isner is and Mahout. Isner and Mahout. Sounds, like yeah. sounds like some of these Scottish people say, Isner and Mahout? I've no idea. I'm a stranger here myself. Yeah. <laughs> the press called it the longest game, but yeah. presumably it was also the dullest game. Yeah. <laughs> if they played any longer, then they would have synchronised their menstrual cycles. <laughs> <laughs> Did you watch any of it, though? Just kept yeah. going, are you watching it, just go, oh, finish, just end, just stop. I felt like Sting's wife. <laughs> <laughs> Make it stop. No, and, actually, the, and the best thing about it, because the two of them are completely unknown, so the commentator, God love the commentator, who had no little nuggets about the two of them, because they hadn't done anything, and they're going, oh, tall guy again. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, well, the little French guys won that one. I got nothing! I got nothing! Get me out of here! So boy, what they need, every time there's an ace, there should be a monkey in roller skates just wandering around and go, ta-da! <laughs> Just to make it, I've got another idea. Whenever they go, new balls, please, the crowds have won, has to go, oh, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it went on so long, even the scoreboard broke down. So <laughs> it's out to the stage where the scoreboard can't cope. Surely that's a sign that they should settle it with paper, scissors, stuff. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently, the bloke who lost when he met the guy at the net, he said, best of three. <laughs> <laughs> What has happened to Russian lady tennis players? When I was a kid, right, if there was a Russian lady tennis player on and she got interviewed after the match and they go, that was great, you played really well, the Russian lady tennis player would go, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing about the female players, the noise they make when they hit the ball is extraordinary, isn't it? It makes you think, what do they sound like with the orgasm? <laughs> if they make that noise when they hit a tennis ball, it must sound like someone's throwing a seal into a jet engine. <laughs> I've, you know, it, it, it just always bugs me the, the, it, there is no physical reason to make a noise while... Sounds good, though, doesn't it, darling? No, it doesn't <laughs> sound good. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound ironic, but there's no reason to do it. Like, if you move a piano or something, or you're lifting a suitcase, in that bit... It, 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 last it, move a piano. I, OK, that's <laughs> a good example. I've moved a piano a long time. So, do you know what it would be? It would be if, uh, on, a, on an airline check-in desk, right? You know that bit where you have to go... Uh, Boom, and do that like whatever. Yeah. That, you, people don't go, like that. <laughs> That's the same, it's an impulse motion like whatever. But wouldn't but it be great if they did? Imagine snooker. Oh! <laughs> 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 Darts. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we like, a bit of grunt. Oh, you're really. being drafted with a child. Take <laughs> <laughs> <Bring> me! <laughs> the, queen be, to make, the Queen ought to make a noise every time she shakes someone's hand. <laughs> 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 There's also, you've got to feel a bit sorry for the Queen, cos she went to Wimbledon for the first time in 33 years on yeah. that day, and she found that exactly the same match was still happening. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the idea of the Queen sitting at the tennis going, I'm a stamp! I'm a coin! <laughs> I'm a stamp! <laughs> I'm a coin! <laughs> <laughs> but, at the end of that round, points to Chris, here and Mickey! Now we come to see who you'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, please. I'll read out this week's topics, and then we'll see what our panelists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is unlikely things to hear at the World Cup. I'll tell you what, that Nelson Mandela's a bit of a dick. <laughs> 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 and on comes the sub for North Korea, and it's torpedoed the opposition. <laughs> Pesky scores! <laughs> and there they are, Scotland through to the final 16. <laughs> <laughs> I 
and we're a bit pushed for time this week, so uh, the both sides have been told to just play the highlights. <laughs> the last time I saw African kids this excited, Madonna was at their school with a net. <laughs> It's very hard to tell with his legs at that angle, but no, that is definitely a Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> yes, on the one hand, uh, we lose uh, the tournament, uh, but uh, on the plus side, it's Dolmio tonight. <laughs> That's right, Emmanuel Adeboyo. I understand exactly what you just said. <laughs> The English fans are taunting the American fans by holding up an oil-covered pelican. <laughs> Ooh, goody, James Corden's show's on next. <laughs> England, of course, are being sponsored by Tesco Online, which is why John Terry has just been substituted by three ripe avocados. <laughs> Here we are on safari. There is a giraffe and an ostrich. I'm terribly sorry, it's Peter Crouch's parents. <laughs> England are playing fantastically. This is a splendid DVD of 1966. <laughs> <laughs> and what a shame Ireland couldn't be here, but then Thierry Henry is a filthy, cheating, lying bitch. <laughs> You want carpets? Can I the egg on your carpet? <laughs> <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely letters to television channels. Dear Channel 5, your recent documentary on dyslexia was insightful and sensitive. Please show the boy was shit for brains again. <laughs> <laughs> As a terrorist, I've been watching <laughs> Countdown with interest. <laughs> It is rubbish. Nothing happens. <laughs> Dear News 24, go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Babe Station, have you actually read the trade's description? That. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Bravo, I don't quite know how to put this, but uh, well done. <laughs> Channel 5, isn't it time you just called it a day? <laughs> no one will mourn. <laughs> I'm writing to thank you. On Sunday afternoon, while I was watching television with my wife, I was urged to press the red button. I did, and my wife had her first orgasm in 40 years. <laughs> Dear Al Jazeera, please bring back your hit sitcom, Men Behaving Baghdadly. <laughs> History Channel. The Nazis were bad. We get it. <laughs> Dear Hallmark, roses are red, violets are blue, your cards are shit and your channel is too. <laughs> Dear Channel 4, why don't you pricks book me for any of your shows? <laughs> Sky Sports minus one. <laughs> Thank you for showing the Grand National. I won £100,000. <laughs> Dear Point of View, who should I complain to if I think Point of View is shit? <laughs> <laughs> Dear Fiverr, if I give you a tenner, will you please stop broadcasting? Dear Channel 4, why not liven up Deal or No Deal by putting a nail bomb in one of the boxes? <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the point's going to rush ahead of Andy! <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Ed Byrne and Russell Howard. <laughs> yeah. Commiserations to Chris Anderson, Hugh Dennis and Mickey Flanagan. Thank you for watching. I'm Darrell Green. Good night. 
New comedy for BBC Three now. Give it a try. It's Cheeky Tearaway, Lee Nelson's Well Good Show.